Hello and welcome back. This is our fifth and last lecture for chapter one. In this lecture, we will finish our focus on defining basic terminology and explaining some of the foundational concepts of statistics. Specifically, we will cover validity, reliability, and sampling methods. So let's begin with validity and reliability. In lecture four, we introduced the idea of good research design in order to have valid and reliable data to analyze. It is also very important to determine the validity and reliability of research findings or results when we are presented with claims and those research findings. So let's talk about what we mean by validity and reliability. Outside of statistical research, Validity and reliability are used interchangeably. For research and statistics, they are different. Validity implies accuracy of a test or measurement. It applies to both research design and methods. Reliability implies consistency and stability. Validity has to do with how well a test produces data that it intends to measure. Does a test or measurement accurately measure what it is supposed to? For example, a bathroom scale is valid if it accurately measures weight. A personality test is valid if it accurately measures personality. A final exam is valid if it accurately measures students' knowledge of course material. Reliability has to do with how well a test produces stable and similar results under consistent conditions. Do we get similar results if we retake the test or replicate the study? For example, if I step on a bathroom scale five times and I get similar weights, then the scale is reliable. If I take a personality test three times and I get similar results, then the personality test is reliable. If my students take a final exam multiple times and get similar results, then the exam is reliable. One last thing we need to talk about to determine the accuracy of research findings or, re or research design. S sampling methods. How are data obtained to support the conclusions being made? Most of you are probably familiar with census data. When researchers use a census, they are gathering data from all the members of a population. When researchers use sampling, they are using data from some members of a population selected to represent that population. Researchers use random selection to make sure that differences among the participants are evenly distributed. If differences are evenly distributed, then the effects of those differences may be canceled out. Random selection simply means that everyone in the population has an equal chance of being selected for a sample. Remember that population is all subject of, subjects of interest and sample is a subset of subjects from that population. The researcher determines sample size or the number of participants selected from a population. Generally, larger samples have fewer issues with validity and reliability than smaller samples. We will see how larger samples produce more accurate findings in later chapters. However, we also must be careful that sample size is not so large that we would find differences no matter what.
Once a researcher determines sample size, they can obtain their sample from the population of interest. Random selection requires the use of some form of random sampling. Random sampling is a probability sampling method, meaning that it relies on the laws of probability to select a sample that can be used to make inferences to the population. Random sample is defined as one in which each and every member of the population has an equal chance of being selected. And there are different ways to obtain a random sample. Here are a few. Simple random sample is a sampling technique. A simple random sample is a set of n objects or subjects in a population where all possible samples are equally likely to happen. Here's a basic example of how to get a simple random sample using the lottery method. Put 100 numbered bingo balls into a bowl. This is the population. Select 10 bingo balls from the bowl without looking. This is the sample. Another example is where the names of 25 employees are chosen out of a hat from a company of 250 employees. Each of the 250 employees would be assigned a number between 1 and 250, and 25 of those numbers would be chosen at random. For larger populations, a manual lottery would not be feasible. Selecting a random sample from a large population would require a computer-generated process where the same methodology as the lottery method is used, only the number assignments and selections are performed by computers, not humans. A simple random sample is chosen in a way that every set of individuals has an equal chance to be in the selected sample. A stratified sample is another sampling technique. A stratified sample is used when there are identifiable subgroups in a population. For example, a researcher could divide a population of Southern Californian residents by age, gender, ethnicity, income, religion, or political party, and so on. After a researcher divides that population into those groups, or what we call strata, then they select a simple random sample from each group or strata. Cluster sampling is used when natural groups are present in a population. A researcher divides the population into a set of different coherent areas, then they randomly select areas to assess. The researcher can then test all the subject in the, in the selected areas, or they can obtain a random sample from each selected areas. So for example, a researcher is interested in the opinions of homeless across the country. Instead of studying a few homeless people in every town across the country, a researcher randomly selects a number of towns and interviews a random number of homeless people in each randomly selected town. Systematic sampling is used when it's difficult to use a simple random sampling method. It is used when it is easier to use every nth subject. For example, let's say a researcher wants to interview people who go to nightclubs. The researcher wants a sample of 30 people and they know that there are about 250 to 300 people in the club due to fire regulations. So the researcher divides 300 by 30 and determines 
that every 10th person that goes into the nightclub will be interviewed. The starting point has to be random as well. So the researcher generates a random number between 1 and 10 and comes up with 4. So starting with the 4th person that enters the club, every 10th person is interviewed. The 4th person, then the 14th person, then the 24th, the 34th, and so on. The last sampling method is convenience sampling. Convenience sampling is when a researcher just uses people who are available. People in the street, people they know, people they work with, customers, and so on. Most experiments conducted at universities select available and willing students, a convenience sample. Pollsters who interview people as they exit their polling place use convenience sampling. Internet surveys or public opinion polls also use convenience sampling. Convenience sampling makes it really difficult to generalize to a population. So now we've finished chapter one. There's a lot of information here for chapter one, so make sure that you review it more than once and you should be ready to take the quiz for chapter one.